Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about prepping your raised bed for pepper plants for next spring. Today's October 30th. This is a 32 inch metal raised bed from Vijega. Check out my video description if you want more information about picking up a metal raised bed. Second year of growing bell peppers. There are 12 in there. Last year I think I grew 14, maybe 16. That was too many. 12 plants fit into the space. Two feet wide, six feet long. These are beautiful pepper plants. And I just want to stress again, today is October, let me get my shadow out of here. Today is October 30th. I'm in Maryland zone seven. These 12 plants continue to produce. Tonight we're getting a frost, tomorrow a heavier frost. This is today's production. Last production of my pepper plants. They do extremely well in raised beds like this. The whole key to your peppers, nice loose soil, drains well but holds moisture, water peppers more than you think, give them a water soluble fertilizer regularly. If you want to subscribe and follow me, I'll show you how I take care of these next year, 2024. But today I'm going to set up the soil. We're going to be adding in some more compost, basic soil, any organic granular fertilizer, just getting it set up. This bed was set up uh, and I'll link the video in the description, but because it's a tall metal raised bed, putting in quality soil from the bottom up can be really expensive. So the bottom third is kind of, you know, stuff that's not broken down, like pieces of firewood, tree branches, cut grass, middle section, a little bit better material, top third, your quality stuff. But what happens is the stuff in the bottom decays. So we see a nice drop from the top, and that was up like two ribs taller. We're going to fill this back up, get it set up, clear out the plants, of course, and this will be ready for next year. Just look how nice and thick these bell peppers are. They can be finicky. Sometimes growing in the ground, they'd only get maybe three feet tall. These are much taller, nice and thick, heavy production, continued to produce all the way till today, really, just before this video. And the plants are just beautiful. They're continuing to flower. If we didn't have a frost coming, these will continue to go and grow. But frost is here, what can you do? Great way to grow peppers. All right, let me clean this up and I'll show you the basic setup to have these ready for next spring. Just wanted to add, here's another metal raised bed. It doesn't have to be as tall as the first one I showed you. These are shishito peppers. One plant right there, another plant over there. I'm not gonna set this one up yet because I've got lettuce growing in there, but here is my October 30th harvest of shishitos. I mean, peppers do really well in raised beds where the soil is loose and drains well. In that bag, those are all shishitos that I'm gonna collect and save the seeds. But the setup is the same. For the raised bed that I'm gonna show you how to set up, something this size and even smaller. You wanna get in the organic matter, get in the organic granular, let that start breaking down now. So come springtime, later spring, when you're putting in your pepper plants, they're ready to go. I think it's important to give you a sense of how loose the soil is. If I reach in, I mean, you can see, and it hasn't been watered for a while because I was just letting these finish up. Nice and loose. When I go to pull out the pepper plants, they just pop out. That's some of the root system. That's the goal. Something that's beautiful like this, your peppers are going to really thrive. I wanted to show you the anatomy, a little bit of the pepper roots. Part of the strategy for bell peppers, because they can be finicky, is growing them in these metal raised beds. Again, they don't need to be this tall. But the soil in at least the top third here is really loose. And again, I have prep videos on that. You can check out my video description. Here's a basic anatomy. Look at these nice, thick, deep roots. And they went down even further straight into the raised bed. This gets down deep, finds nutrients down there, anchors the plant, pulls the nutrients, of course. The shallow roots spread out across the top. My top dressings with organic granular, water soluble, throwing in more compost, feeds the upper surface. These roots pull in the nutrients. That's just a beautiful root system. And I yank this out too. If you have heavier clay or heavier soil, sometimes it can constrict a little bit the growth of your pepper plants. If you want massive peppers, bell peppers, this is the way that I recommend to grow them. Now the beauty is in this space, two feet wide about, six feet long, I was doing two plants, two plants, two plants, all the way down to I had 12 plants in there. They are 
pretty close together. You saw how well they produced, how well they're growing. But this is a really small footprint in a garden. Six plants is plenty for a family of four. Twelve plants, you're going to have extra peppers to give away. But you don't have to spend a lot of money to spread your pepper plants out all over your garden. You can grow them in a compact space like this. Twelve pepper plants, great production. You want to add in organic granular fertilizer. Anyone works, they're all basically the same. This is a 533 NP and K dry and granular. Peppers are pretty heavy feeders. I'm going to put a good amount right down the whole bed here. And I would do that all the way to the end. There's some depth to this, which is what the bell peppers really love. Any pepper will grow well in this, but the bell peppers do really well. Pretty heavy handful. We're going to mix that in in a second. I also like taking some wood ash from my fire pit. One handful. You don't want to be as heavy with this. Just scattered across here. That's going to add in some more nutrients for your plants. This is really loose. Remember how deep that root was going down into there. Down at the bottom I have firewood, tree branches, all kinds of stuff that are going to slowly decay and those deeper roots will get to that. Because the soil is so loose I can just mix this in with my hand to a good four inches and I'm just getting the nutrients back in there. That's going to set up this level going down so now we're going to add in compost, soil, some leaf grow. You can really use whatever you want, but you want to bring this back up to at least here. And that's how much it dropped actually over the whole summer. And then on top of this, we put wood mulch later. So let me finish this up and we'll get to the next step. Locally, one of our counties creates a product called leaf grow. This is leaves, other organic material all composted down six bucks for 1.5 cubic feet. I'd like to put that in next. I use that. It's pretty inexpensive, but more importantly, I know that it's quality stuff. This is where you could put in any bag manure, um, any kind of compost that's bagged, mushroom compost, anything you like is going to be the next layer. And I'll just spread that out, you know, across here. On top of this, I bought some actually bag topsoil because I don't have any trimmings or yard soil waste from around here. But then I'm going to put some topsoil, basic cheap stuff on top of here. And then my good stuff, and you saw how all those shallow roots were growing on the pepper plants. My good stuff, my own compost is going to go on the top. So it's mixed into the top two inches or so. That's going to set this up for next year, really. If you're keeping track of cost, the leaf grow was six bucks. This is a premium topsoil just from a local hardware store. That was three dollars and eighty cents. You want about one to two inches of the leaf grow or the bag compost that you buy. Put that down. The leaf grow I know dries out pretty quickly and it's pretty light. So I'd like to mix in just basic earth. If I had earth like doing the edgings around my flower beds I would just put in that, that soil right in here instead of buying a bag product. But that kind of makes stuff a little bit heavier. It doesn't make it dense. It's still nice and loose, but just makes it a little bit heavier. I like that better. So I'm going to spread this out, come back, we'll put down some more organic granular, and then we'll put down my compost. I can't stress the importance of getting compost started. Get it started now, in the fall, year from now, you're going to have plenty of compost. Your garden's going to love you for it. Leaves, this is probably two years old. Some of this stuff was put in last year, but down at the bottom, it's just beautiful decomposed leaves. I'm going to be putting some of that right into this bag. Stuff from two years ago, it's just going right into the bag. I mean, it is really, really good stuff. This is really the last part. Now, if you have plenty of your own compost, you don't need to buy the bag manure or the leaf grow. Just use a couple bags of this. I do like throwing in some topsoil or, you know, earth from around your yard just to make it a little bit heavier. But again, it drains really well. Organic granular, not as much. Spread all the way down. And then a bag full of the compost. I mean, this is just beautiful stuff. You can make it yourself. Earthworms love it. Break up any clumps. There are some roots, some plastic. My own trash. And you're just going to spread this throughout that top part of your container. A good inch or two. 
I mean, it's just such wonderful stuff. And I understand everybody doesn't have room, but just look how beautiful it is. So once you're done, it's loose, obviously. Just mix it down, something simple like this, all the way down. You know, top four inches, top six inches. You're gonna let this sit here. It is the end of October. I can't really plant until maybe late April if I'm lucky. So this is going to sit for six months and it's going to just recharge, replenish this whole growing space. I've got all this wonderful compost up top. The surface roots are going to love it. The roots can go down nice and deep to that rotting firewood and big chunk stuff down at the bottom. And I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do. So this is all set up now for next spring. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe. Every year I do a complete series starting in January all the way through till really up till now when you put your beds to rest on how to grow plants. You'll see how I grow 12 pepper plants in this small space. Thanks for watching.